for the Kansas City Royals in their drive to get back to the 500 level. After yesterday's rain out at Kauffman Stadium, the Royals are set to play a doubleheader with the Boston Red Sox. Game one, next. It's a busy day of baseball on this Sunday for Tony Muser's Royals as they square off against the Boston Red Sox. We welcome you to Kauffman Stadium. Overcast, cloudy, somewhat cool here at the ballpark as the Royals and Red Sox meet in game one of what will be a twin bill here today. Along with Royals Hall of Fame pitcher Paul Splitoff, I'm Bob Davis. Royals and Red Sox coming up. Kind of a rarity today, a doubleheader. Well, you remember when teams used to schedule doubleheaders? When the Royals first got away from it, they told the fans any rainouts would be made up as part of a doubleheader mm -hmm. rather than on off days, and that's what we have here today, a back-to-back -back doubleheader. And really an important couple of weeks coming up. This is just game two of a nine-game home string. Uh, these next two weeks can be very important. Well, if you take a look at the standings in the American League Central, we're starting to get some separation between the teams up top, Minnesota, Cleveland, Chicago. Actually, the Twins have done what everybody had hoped they would do, knock off Cleveland. Now you've got some teams jammed in there up top, but the separation with Kansas City Detroit lagging behind, and you will look what lies ahead for the Royals over the next couple weeks. Once they get through this double here today, games with the Detroit Tigers, both home and road, and also the Baltimore Orioles, home and road again. You see how the Royals did against those two clubs last year. You want to come out playing well here over the next couple weeks. You've got a couple other teams that are off to slow starts this year. And our pitchers today, it should be kind of an interesting matchup. Dan Reichert, for the Royals, who lost to the Red Sox a few days ago in Boston, but in his short big league career, he's pitched well against Boston. That was the only poor ball game he's had against the Red Sox. Didn't have good stuff or command of that stuff in a game played earlier this year at Fenway Park. Lifetime record is outstanding. He needs to find his game today. John Burkett goes for the Boston Red Sox. It's been a couple years since the Royals have seen him. He's been with the Atlanta Braves the last couple years. Finesse, right-handed pitcher. Royals will have to be patient here today. And he's coming off the disabled list after some shoulder inflammation during spring training. So it's the Royals and Red Sox just ahead. Chuck Knobloch back in the lineup as the designated hitter for the Royals. Also, Joe Randa returns to action. Royals and Red Sox next on the Royals Television Network. The City Royals telecast is brought to you by your Midwest Ford dealers, by Toro, and by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together. And welcome back to Coppin Stadium in Kansas City, Royals baseball. Actually, a doubleheader day here. We'll bring you game one here on the Royals television network. Great to have you along as the Royals play the Red Sox. They're two and two against Boston so far this year. Most recent ball game here Friday night when Pedro Martinez and the Red Sox escaped with a four to nothing victory over the Royals. Oh, well, we'll take a look at the Boston Red Sox lineup for today, courtesy of Southwest Airlines. Grady Little is the new skipper of the Sox. He'll have Johnny Damon in the leadoff spot. Jose Offerman, the designated hitter, and Nomar Garcia Parra hits third. Manny Ramirez in left, Brian Daubach at first. Jay Hillenbrand, who got the big hit here on Friday, will be the third baseman. Then in right field, Trot Nixon, Doug Mirabelli behind the plate for Boston, and Ray Sanchez, the second baseman, will bat ninth for the Bo Sox. And on the mound for the Kansas City Royals, Dan Reichert making his fourth start of the new season. He is 0-2. Dan Reichert had a solid spring training this year as he tries to put th some things back together from a tough season a year ago where he worked in just 123 innings for the Royals going 8-8. Eight and eight. But Reichert, good sinking fastball, hard slider. This would appear a good, be a good matchup for him here this afternoon if he has his good stuff and command of it. He'll look to throw strikes on the very first pitch. That would be a key to get ahead of these Red Sox hitters. You see his career record against Boston. Still primarily a two-pitch pitcher. Good hard fastball, sinking slider. Still working on, a, on an effective straight changeup and very inconsistent with the changeup throughout his career. All right, good for the Royals as we check the Royals around the horn, courtesy of Subway. Well, the Royals after the day off yesterday, we'll start with Mike Sweeney at first base for the first game in this afternoon's doubleheader. Carlos Fables gets the start at second base. It's his 12th start of the season. Randa's back in the lineup at third base after having a couple days off. A.P. Perez has been the everyday guy at shortstop for the Royals. In left field, a late switch for the Royals. It's Raul Labanez originally in the lineup as the designated hitter, but Chuck Knobloch with some leg problems, so Abanez in left field for game one. Carlos Beltran plays center field. Michael Tucker 
in a platoon situation. The left handed hitter in the right field platoon is back out in right field. Brent Main will do the catching today. Chuck Knobloch was the starter in left field. He will be the designated hitter and still lead off. Well, the Royals do have both Knobloch and Randa back in the lineup. Coaching at third Knobloch serving Mike as the Kuby. DH as we get set with Johnny Damon in the leadoff spot for Boston. Johnny hit the second spot here on Friday night. The veteran Ricky Henderson was in the lineup for the Sox on Friday, and he occupied the leadoff position. So here is Damon, who carries with him a four-game hitting streak. He had a couple of hits, including a bunt single here on Friday. Johnny Damon hitting at 304 for Boston off to a good start. And the game underway ball one. Johnny Damon the center fielder for the Red Sox Johnny with his third team now in three years having played for the A's a year ago. Out to an O to the Boston leadoff man 57 degrees as the game unfolds over an overcast sky a lot of rain in the area yesterday hence the postponement here at Kaufman Stadium. There's a strike two and one. Maybe this is going to be a slow track here this afternoon even though that infield is covered and the outfield drains so very well you figure it's going to be a little bit soft. A bouncing ball a high chopping ball to Perez and out at first on a close play Damon can really get down the line as you know and maybe a high chopping ground ball had to make a good strong throw and he got it. Now this is pretty impressive. Nafi Perez charging from contact. High chopping ground ball. Watch the barehanded pick that he makes. Not an easy pick because that was a long hop. Barehanded catch and throw in one motion. Damon caught by less than a half a step. Good major league play to open out this doubleheader. Nafi won a gold glove in the National League a couple of years ago. Now here is Jose Offerman. Offerman, the designated hitter for Boston here today, did not play in the game here on Friday. Just the sixth game in which he has appeared for the Red Sox. He's to victory today for the Royals. Let's take a look at those dodge keys for a Royals victory in game one. Dan Riker, throw strikes and keep the ball down on the strike zone. It gets better sinking action on both fastball and slider when working at the knees. Have patience with Burkett. Force him to throw strikes. He was a guy that will get hitters to chase all afternoon long if you're not patient at the plate. And whatever happened to the high strike call? Man. Always ask me those tough ones. Offerman up there for the first time here today, and in this series, he is one for nine. Lifetime against Riker. Now he evens out at two and two. Offerman's hit well against the Royals. A 346 lifetime hitter against his former team here, Kansas City. Of course, Offerman came up with the Dodgers. Came over here as a shortstop originally, but had his best success in a Royals uniform as a first baseman. A little looping liner to left. Abanya is right there to make the catch. Two gone. Pablo well, Abanya is a pretty good outfielder. We haven't seen him in that Betting role third. all that much with the Royals. The We're more comfortable with him as a designated hitter. Can play all three outfield positions, although a little out of position in center field. Doesn't have that kind of speed, but he will not hurt you with his defense. Got a good jump on this last ball off the bat of Jose Offerman. Oh, two outs here in the top of the first. And Riker will deal with the dangerous number three hitter, Nomar Garcia Para. Look what he's done against Dan. He's hit a lot of pitchers pretty well in his major league career. Garcia Para comes into today with a six game hitting streak. Kept it going with a one for four performance here on Friday. Pretty well to center field, but room out there for Beltron, and it is a one, two, three, top of the first. Riker got him in order. Red Sox nothing. Royals coming up on the Royals Television Network. We got Tony's lineup for today. So you have the guys swing here this afternoon against these Boston Red Sox. Royals lineup presented by Southwest Airlines. In the leadoff spot is Knobloch, the DH. Tucker will be in right, Beltron in center. Sweeney at first, Ibanez in left, Joe Randa back at third. Perez at short, Brent Main behind the plate, and Carlos Fablis, the second baseman, will hit ninth. Some subtle changes, a little shakeup in that batting order over what we've seen much of the year for the Royals. And they hope to supply a little more offense today as they battle these Boston Red Sox and veteran right-hander John Burkett, who's making his first appearance of the year. Knobloch takes a strike. Burkett pitched last year for the Atlanta Braves and was a 12 game winner with a great ERA 3.04. Oh, 
One and one to Knobloch. Burkett, 37 years old. We saw him, of course, as a member of the Texas Rangers, but except for that stint in Texas, he's been a National Leaguer during his career. Last time the Raw saw him was 1999. Talk about a great year last year. How about a National League All-Star a season ago for Burkett? Jam job right there, caught by the shortstop, Garcia Parra, out number one. How about the Red Sox defensively? They've got some good players around the horn as we take a look. Brian Daubach gets the start at first base this afternoon. We'll probably see Tony Clark in game two. Solid up the middle with Ray Sanchez at second base. Omar Garcia Parra, their shortstop. Youngster Shea Hillenbrand plays third base. What a stick he has been early on. Here's a look at Nomar, their shortstop. In left field, that's Manny Ramirez. Johnny Damon, the speedster, plays center field. Trot Nixon, former number one draft choice, plays right field. Doug Marabelli's their backup catcher. He's behind the plate here in game one. And a fly ball off the bat of Tucker to left field. Ramirez didn't catch it, and Tucker hustles into second. The Royals get their first runner of the day, a little looper to left field. Ramirez couldn't quite make the play, and Tucker, running hard all the way, ends up at second base. Well, Michael Tucker just going with the pitch. It's a fastball tailing to the outside corner. And Ramirez may be playing a little bit deep in left field for Tucker. Ball drops in in front of him. Johnny Damon going to his right. That'll be a tough throw for the Red Sox center fielder to try to gun down Tucker, who is hustling all the way. It's a base hit for Tucker, and he's at second here with one out. Second two base hit of the new season for Michael. Now here is Beltron with a chance to drive in an early run for the Royals. Showing bunt, a strike over the inner edge. Royals is a team hitting just under 200 this year against Red Sox pitching. So you want to get off to a good start against Burkadu, as you mentioned, Bob, making his first start and appearance of this season. Beltron's numbers with runners in scoring position, pretty good. Tremendous home run at Minnesota the other night. And a delayed call from Tim Chee to the home plate umpire. Beltron thought the pitch was inside. Cut fastball. Burkett uses two different fastballs. Sinker down and away from the lefties and a little cut fastball. That one looked a little bit like a slider. Beltron thought it drifted inside. Home plate umpire thought otherwise. Burkett has a terrific straight changeup and an outstanding curveball. Needs to have good command of all of his pitches to be successful. Carlos down in the count 0 and 2. And strikes out on three pitches. So not a good plate appearance by the young switch hitting center fielder with a runner at second and one out. First strikeout for Birkin. Birkin just working both sides of the plate against Carlos Beltran. Average velocity to take a look at his numbers. Very solid with that 3.04 earned run average. They struggled a little bit offensively last year. They weren't as good an offensive team the season ago as they had been in the past. You look at his numbers. 87 hits allowed and almost 220 innings of work. Now here's Sweeney. So Royals need something to happen here with two outs if they're to capitalize on that double by Tucker. Low to Mike, ball one. Sweeney is four for 13 in the past against John Burkett. He had one of just two Royal hits here on Friday night. Numbers this year compared to a year ago much better. Sweeney off to a good start. Royals need a two-out base hit here to jump in front. Sweeney's eight RBI so far this year, just one has come against the Boston Red Sox. He'd like to turn that around here today. Burkett had shoulder inflammation in the spring and now making his first start of the year. A veteran with a lot of experience. Hopped him up. Shallow left center. Omar Garcia Parra makes the catch, and the Royals strand a base runner in the first. And now, ladies and gentlemen, no runs. We are scoreless after one on the Royals Television Network. City scoreless after one as we check out the rest of the action around the American League today with our Southwest Airlines schedule of all games. Yankees have jumped out on the Blue Jays in New York. Orioles and Devil Rays hooked up down at Tropicana Field. Some of the other action underway. Tigers and White Sox just started. The same for the Indians and those Minnesota Twins. Later, the Mariners home to the Rangers. And a night game tonight in the American League. Anaheim at Oakland. It'll be the middle third for Boston. Manny Ramirez, Brian Daubach, and then Shea Hillenbrand here in the top of the second. Is anybody tougher on the Royals than Manny Ramirez? Going to have to look long and hard to find a guy who's been any more dangerous than Ramirez. 
third foul to the right side. Strike one. He's done surprisingly well defensively. A lot of people thought that the Boston fans would turn on him when they saw some of the defensive problems that he would have and also some miscue on the bases. But he's kept those to a minimum and he is a fan favorite in Beantown. Brady Little, the new manager. Knows this guy well. 0-1 to Manny. Missed low and away. One ball, one strike. Ramirez, if you look at early numbers, seems to do better when he's the DH. But when he's in the lineup, he's a threat. He's the left fielder here today for Boston. Played right field, DH'd a year ago. Well, that's hit sharply, but gloved by Nafee from his knees. Safe at first. Boy, he had very little chance to throw out Ramirez deep in the hole. It'll be an infield hit for Manny Ramirez. Nafee, who made a great play to start the ball game. Had a good pickup right there. The first baseman, number two. Bob, as difficult as this play is, I think Nafee Perez makes it on a dry surface. I think he would have had a chance to scramble back and get to his feet. I mean, virtually no chance to throw a guy out from your knees. And he's trying to get back to his feet, but his knees went out from underneath him there, and he was unable to get any kind of leverage on that throw. It would have been interesting to see him make that play on a dry surface. He might have gotten Ramirez, but I'll tell you what, it would have taken a terrific play. So Manny's at first to lead off the second. Here is Brian Daubach, who's the first baseman today for Boston. He has served as the DH much of the early going this season for the Sox. Actually, Grady Little has worked a lot of guys in there, but his bat was so hot just before we got to Boston last week. He was their DH for three consecutive days. That was the first time Grady Little had done that all year long. Just settle on one DH for three straight days. Now they're back to rotating guys around. He's gone cold over his last 15. Minor to center. That settles in for a base hit. So two on, nobody out for Boston here to start the second inning. And like on cue, he breaks the 0 for 15. Now one for 16, but that's solid Adding single six, to the center. third baseman, number 29, Shane Hillenbrand. In second inning jam here. I will deal with a hot hitter. The man who was the offensive he rode for Boston on Friday. Shea Hillenbrand, whose base is loaded triple, broke a scoreless ball game in the sixth inning here on Friday. Red Sox went on to win four to nothing. They added another run later in the game. But this guy's big hit really won it for Pedro Martinez and the Sox. In for a strike. Hillenbrand, the young third baseman. Was his one hit in the ball game? That triple here Friday. He's three for eight in the past against Rikers. They've got Ramirez at second, Dabach at first. Nobody out. Now it's the Red Sox trying to grab the early lead. Popped him up. Fabless made the catch. The infield umpire is up with the right arm as the out has been recorded and. The other runners, Ramirez, Dabach, and seventh, the right on. fielder. Well, there's a big Number pitch seven, right there. A guy that got a huge it. hit Friday. Royals get him here in a scoring situation for Boston early in this game. And, Bob, this is a similar pitch to what he hit off the wall in right center field in Friday night's ball game, but the count's so important. Had a favorable count here on Friday night and was able to go out and drive an outside pitch. This time, not a favorable count. Not getting a good look against Dan Riker. You come away with a weak little pop-up. One out. Now left-handed batter will be in there against Reichert, the Boston right fielder, Trot Nixon. Right through there for a strike. Nixon 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts here on Friday. Not huge numbers at Kauffman Stadium, although he does have the three home runs in 12 games. He's 5 for 16 in the past against Reichert. Two on, one out for Boston. Breaking pitch, waved at and missed. Good off-speed pitch by Dan Riker. That's the pitch that he needs so that hitters, especially left-handed hitters, cannot sit on that good fastball and a hard slider. Al Nipper is the Royals' pitching coach. Formerly worked in the Boston organization. 0-2 oh to Nixon. And sliced down the line and left out of play. Right, here we go, baby. Two, two. Way to go. It was 57 degrees when the first pitch was thrown, so just a little cool air. The wind blowing across the diamond left to right, left field to right field. Fans dressed accordingly. They settle in for a big day of baseball here at Kauffman Stadium. 
Still 0-2 to Nixon. And ball one off the mark. Nixon not offering. Nixon hitting 220, has one home run so far this year, a couple of doubles. And Riker, each of the last two years, splitting time between starting rotation and bullpen. Last year earned a run average of point lower as a relief pitcher. The year before that, the situation was just reversed. He was better as a starter in the year 99. And the count has evened out now, two and two. Nixon occupies the seventh spot in the order. What Tony Muser is hoping for now is some consistency. He has seen all of his guys have a good day or two, and even Dan Riker terrific in his opening ball game, but not so good as next time out at Fenway Park. Those guys to establish some consistency so manager and coaching staff have an idea what to expect day in and day out. Well, that's a problem down the line. It'll score one, maybe two. Ramirez jogs home. Here comes Dabak. It'll be two to nothing, Boston, on the double by Trot Nixon. So three hits in the inning. Nixon lined that ball into the right field corner. Two to nothing, Red Sox. Ramirez scored from Batting second. Dawback all the way from first. Well, Trot Nixon has not had a big year so far early on in the RBI department. Batting in the lower third of the batting order. Royals trying to get to the outside corner against Nixon on that last 2-2 offering, but Danny Riker left it on the inner half of the plate, and Trot Nixon pumped it into the right field corner. Both runners score easily. Ramirez from second. Dawback, who's a below average runner, he scores from all the way over at first base. And the Red Sox break on top. Now the number eight hitter, Doug Marabelli, the catcher. Back up to Jason Veritek, who you can expect to be in there in game two. Ball one. Marabelli, a catch and throw guy, Bob, who does have some juice in his bat last year. Pretty good home run year for him. Combined time between Texas and Boston. Nine round trippers last year. That was a career high. One on, one out, and a couple of runs home, and now timeout has been called. Well, you can't spot these guys many runs. The Royals have been, other than that 16-run explosion late the other day at Minnesota, they have struggled to score. In fact, the Royals have already been shut out three times this year. Brady Little's team trying to grab this game early. The Royals had a scoring chance in the first, but the man at second, next two batters were retired. Now they're down two to nothing, and it's two and zero to. Mirabelli. Well, we talk about the Royals team batting average against Red Sox pitching just under 200. They average about four and a half runs per ball game against the Red Sox so far this year. So that's the range that you can look at. Gosh, if you're working against Pedro Martinez, you might already be a loser. That's a good point. 3 and 0 to this backup catcher for Boston. Burkett staked to an early lead in making his first start of the year for the Sox. needs to throw a strike right here. And missed badly inside. After giving up the two RBI double, he walks the number eight hitter on four pitches. Batting well, nine, the inconsistency the you talked about, he got him in order Sanchez. in the first. That's Damon, Offerman, and Garcia Parra. But now he's faced five batters in the second. Four of them have reached. And Bob, you start to wonder a little bit when you look at balls that have been hit in this inning. Ramirez starts off with an infield single, ball hit on the ground. Dabak with a line drive to center field. Then you got a pop up on a solid pitch, but then the line drive double, now the walk. Riker right now at this stage of the ballgame, not getting many ground balls. He needs to keep the ball down, and when he does that, he will get ground balls, but he could sure use one right here. A strike to Ray Sanchez, the number nine hitter. Sanchez was 0 for 4 here the other night. Boy, he has played well defensively, as you would expect for Boston. Ray was hit, hitting right at 210 when we were in Boston just a few days ago. And pretty hot recently, now coming in and hitting 267. One and one. Two to nothing, Red Sox. They have out hit the Royals early on, three to one. Two out of three at Fenway Park on the just completed road trip. Lost game one, won the next two. Lost here on Friday, now playing two today with Boston. Goes the runner to third, now he stops. And they'll get an out on the bases. What happened right there, looked like a double steal was underway. Then Nixon slammed on the brakes and they get him on a play at third. 
Well, the Mirabelli goes to second. Some kind of botched sign somewhere. Let's take a look at the runners, see if they both break. You see the lead man breaking right there, a huge break. If the double steal is red right, the runner on first base looks ahead to make sure that lead runner has a sign and he is gone. So he should be about a half a step behind him, not three or four steps behind him like Mirabelli was. Sometimes the element of surprise is in your favor. When you don't have a lot of speed on the bases, you can mix it up by sending runners. Got caught that time. And a strikeout of Sanchez will end the inning. So Riker avoids further damage. Sox get a pair of runs. They lead two to nothing as the Royals come to bat at the second on the Royals television network. Is brought to you by Pizza Hut. So much variety. The best pizzas under one roof. The Royals are trailing as they come to bat in the second. Dan Reichert avoided further damage, and he's listening to his coach, Al Nipper, now in the first base dugout. Let's see what the Royals can generate here in the home half of the second. They had a one out base runner in the first, but failed to score, facing the 37 year old right hander, John Burkett, of the Boston Red Sox. A little bit of a delay right here. First baseman Brian Daubach left the field after taking a couple tosses. Probably a broken string on his first baseman's glove. Headed back up to their clubhouse. So hopefully he will be back on the field here shortly. Don't make a play for a batter without a first baseman. See how that I works out. I like that idea. You know, I think hitters ought to start with one bat. And if they happen to break it, go with the rest of it. What's left of it at the end of the day is what you've got. When you were a kid, huh? Well, now it's all aluminum. You remember the old days. There's Daubach field now. So they'll have their full complement of defenders. Royals have sent up Raul Abanez, Joe Randa, and Nafi Perez in the second. Royals down by a couple now. Austin's out hit the Royals three to one and the Sox lead two to nothing. Abanez the left fielder today. He is 0 for 3 the other day. The Friday game 0 for 2. His only appearances against Burkett. And oh, I really like the lineup change that Tony Muser has instilled here today. Not so much because of Perez out of the number two spot and Tucker up into that slot, but Raul Abana is behind Mike Sweeney. I think other than Mike Sweeney, he's been the most dependable bat the Royals have gotten. I think that's the way you want to structure your lineup. You want to force teams to throw strikes to Sweeney. And through the first couple weeks of the season, Raul Abana appears to be the guy to hit behind Mike. Abana has hit that ball hard, but well foul. So it's a two ball, one strike count. Banya's seven RBIs in his last six games. Nine on the season. Three and one. Banya has a pretty good pickup of the Royals a year ago. And he rifles that one to right center field. Base hit for Ibanez. Damon runs it down in the gap. Ibanez has a double. Boy, he had a couple of great swings there. The foul ball, and then that liner to right center. Royals second double of the ball game. Raul had a little meeting with himself after he ripped that ball down the right field line for not being patient and waiting on John Burkett. Well, he made the adjustment that he needed to make. Got a pitch up in the strike zone just a bit. Damon shading him slightly the opposite way, so the open gap was right center field. But Banyas plugged it, and Damon had a long run to make. Well, that's what you like to think of with a two base hit, a liner in the gap like that. And Royals have a man at second. Nobody out here in inning number two. Fun, yes. Five doubles to go along with his one home run. Now here's Joe Randa, who was really seemingly settling into a groove at Minnesota, then the twinge of the hamstring, and he's missed a couple of games. Now back in there today. Boy, Joe had some big hits in that Royal victory in the middle game at Minnesota. Well, the big game in Minnesota also four for 11 against Red Sox pitching so far this year. The Royals need a healthy Joe Rand in their lineup virtually every day. Joe leads the ball club and runs batted in with 11. Chance for one right here. Ow. Tap foul ball. 0 and 2. Go down in the count. Ibanez got a head in the count. Had a great swing on three and one. Normally in this situation, Burkett will go to work on a hitter and work just out of the strike zone. Complete command of his pitches. Picked on a, pitched on a quality staff last year of the Atlanta Braves, so he saw how some of the veteran guys go at it. I'm sure he learned quite a bit. Randa won't get anything to hit for here for a couple pitches. Joe at worst would like to advance the base runner. You know, Joe has the swing, the natural swing for advancing that base runner. They call it an inside out swing. Likes to Take the ball the opposite way. 
Now a little fly ball shallow right and Nixon will be able to get there and make the catch and Ibanez will have to hang on at second. So Joe went to the right side but popped it up Batting shallow seventh, right. Shortstop number eight Navy Perez. One on one out. Perez at a real disadvantage against a pitcher like John Burke who has a tremendous command once they get behind in the count. Burke just made a solid pitch on Joe Rand. Nafi Perez, who has been batting in the number two spot in the batting order. His seventh position here today. He has the Royals' longest active hitting streak, five games. He had one of the two hits here on Friday. He is three for nine in the past against Burkett. Nafi really couldn't have waited any longer the other night to get his base hit. It came with two outs in the bottom of the ninth inning. And he pops one up to left field. Ramirez makes the catch and the Royals after the line drive leadoff double by Ibanez a couple of lazy fly ball outs. Good job by Burkett here after giving up the hit to Ibanez. Batting eight the catcher number two Brent Main. Now Brent Main will be up there. Next career at Kauffman Stadium of course he Started out here as a member of the Royals, now returning last year. He is just one for 12 against Burkett. There's Ibanez, the runner at second. Upstairs, ball one. He's got a man at second with one out in the first. Failed to advance him, let alone score. And in danger of that same thing happening here in the second right now, unless Maine can come up with something. In for a strike. Uh, so many times momentum is established early on in a ball game, and some things that happen in the first couple innings may continue the rest of the day. Red Sox off to a good start. They capitalized on their best scoring opportunity, came in the second. Royals need to try to turn that momentum right now and get something going offensively. Need a key two out hit. Two and one. Burkett's velocity not overwhelming, but moves the ball around. There's a plan out there. As a scout, radar gun does you no good here this right. afternoon because the guy throwing 84, 85 miles an hour has been more effective than the guy throwing in the low 90s. <laughs> making, pit, making pitches like that. An 83 mile an hour cut fastball, but the location on the last two pitches just perfect if you're John Burkett. One of them just out of the strike zone above the hands. This last one, same kind of movement. It's about a three or four inches a little lower. Right in on the hands of Brent Main. It's a called strike. Now, if you just look at a guy and look at your radar gun, you're going to get confused a lot. It could be a confusing game. Now it's a full count. He doesn't have to give in to Maine, the left-handed batter. Right-handed hitting Fabulous would be next. First base is open. So Burkett's still pitching on his terms here, really. Three and two. Carlos Fabulous on deck. And it is ball four. The Royals have two on and two out. The first walk given up by Burton. Catching on to this, aren't you, about when they challenge people and when they don't have to? Burke going to a curveball right there, giving it a little different look. Now here's Carlos, the number nine hitter. Still cloudy and overcast, but the sun trying to peek through a little bit. It's a welcome sight. You got tired of that frog strangler we had going oh here last night? My. You got your grass cut just in time, didn't you? <laughs> here is Carlos. 0 for 3 in Friday's game. He has not faced John Burkett in his brief big league career. Fabulous, that is. Strike one. The inner part of the plate. Carlos hitting at the ninth spot in the order. Two on, two out for the Royals, who trail two to nothing here in the second. Ball, one strike. Fabulous could extend the inning. The top of the order will be up there next. Royals need something here with two outs. Carlos had pretty good extra base numbers, especially when you look at the doubles that he picked up coming through the minor leagues, but just one extra base hit so far this season. And back through the middle. Base hit, Fabulous. Here comes Ibanez around third, and it's a two to one game. And Carlos Fabulous with a two out RBI hit. Banez first inning double results uh, first leadoff double I should say results in a run. 
Bob, you talk about hitters using their hands and staying inside the ball. That's what Carlos Fabulous is working on. Watch how this ball slices as it goes back through the middle. Got his hands through the zone to make sure that he doesn't get tied up with this pitch. Burkett trying to run the ball in on his hands to jam him. Fabulous quick with his hands, got the bat head through the zone. Inside out swing, he slices it into center field. The Royals have their first round of the day. Good hitting by Carlos Fabulous as he gets his second RBI of the season. Oh, two on for Chuck Knobloch now, who popped out to short, leading off the Royals in the first. Knobloch, the designated hitter in this ball game. A lead off double in the inning by Ibanez. The next two batters retired on fly ball outs. Brent Main drew a walk, and RBI hit for Fabulous. Now Knobloch, four for 18, lifetime against Burkett. Strike one. Royals get on the scoreboard here in the second, and that's encouraging after Boston scored two in the top of this inning. Knobloch with that two-game hitting streak, as you mentioned, Bob, but he's been on base eight consecutive games. The on-base percentage, the all-important on-base percentage, starting to work its way north. Knobloch, eight for eight in the stolen base department so far. The hits are even at three each. 0-1 to Knobloch. We had a nice swing there and fouled it directly back. Well, it's 0 2. What on Knobloch last year was that he started chasing more high fastballs. Berka with that last high fastball registering in at 84 miles an hour. I think any, any hitter sees the 84 mile an hour heater. Can be huff, tough to lay off of that one. Plus the change in the strike zone that we saw a year ago. More emphasis on the so-called high strike. 0-2 to Knobloch. Ooh, barely missed. Uh, able to lay off that pitch. 1-2 now. Perkin probably threw that one precisely where he wanted it. Runners at first and second with two out, a run home, two to one Boston here in the second inning. And a little popper should end the inning. Dawback, the first baseman, makes the catch. The Royals are down. They got a run, they strand a pair. Carlos Fabulous with the RBI base hit for the Royals. Two to one Boston on the Royals television network. This game is brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Hardee's, where you can score great charbroiled taste. Hardee's, the way food ought to be. And by the Missouri Division of Tourism. Missouri, where the rivers run. Call 1-800-MISSOURI for your free vacation guide. Pedro Martinez got the Boston victory here on Friday night. Eight shutout innings and the 4 to nothing Red Sox win. Uh, he's a spectator here this afternoon for a couple of games. Red Sox come to bat in the third. Pretty good line here on Friday for the great pitcher Pedro Martinez. Johnny Damon, Jose Offerman, Nomar Garcia Parra, the top three hitters for Boston. Two to one Red Sox. A one and one to Damon who grounded out a high chopping ground ball to Nafi Perez in the first. Nafi made a bare hand pick up and throw to get Damon on a close play. It's a bouncer to his friend Sweeney, and it gets by Mike down the line. It's Damon on his way to second and on his way to third. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. Damon actually stopped for a moment, then went into third. And boy, a playable ball becomes a base runner at third for Boston here, leading off the inning. Bob, when you teach defense, you always talk to young players about keep your glove down quicker to move your glove from the low side up to get a bad hop rather than keep it up and try to reach down and this ball stays down on Sweeney a little bit Mike getting to his left right there but more in an upright position and trying to drop that glove down to the ball instead of getting down low getting a better look at it and re seeing it into the glove Damon with a little hesitation around second as you mentioned so it look took Michael Tucker a little while to get to the ball and he wanted to go ahead and challenge that arm now here is Offerman Ball one up. Well, the Red Sox get their leadoff man at third here in the top of the third inning. I'm going to say it's a triple. Yeah. No error charged on it. 
It shouldn't be. That would have been a tough chance to throw out a base run. Now here comes Tony Muser out, and he wants to talk to the home plate umpire, Tim Cheetah. Now he cannot argue balls and strikes. Uh, directly to you. We just want the pitch. We're not pissed. He is. We just want the pitch. I mean, that's all. I think you could say upset about something. Cheetah, one of the veteran umpires. I don't think those two guys have ever been on the same page. You think about other confrontations the Royals have had with umpires, and that one's been read over a time or two. The leadoff triple for Damon, who's at third, and 1 0 count on Offerman. There's the strike. Could use a strikeout or a pop up on the infield. Offerman, a pretty good contact guy, though. Hoffman a pretty good hitter. Oh yeah. You think good back to his, player. his days with the Royals usually hitting in the top of the lineup either first or second sometimes the number three hitter and occasionally assignment is the cleanup hitter and whatever spot he was in the lineup and whoever you were playing you really didn't feel overmatched against their one two three hitter wherever you had Offerman you really felt pretty good about your guy offensively regardless of who was in the ballpark against him. I don't get the run home a fly ball hit pretty well to left and Ibanez catches out there. But the ground ball triple by Damon becomes a run. So it's a sacrifice fly three to one Boston as we check our Missouri lottery inside the, the numbers. Garcia Major League Road records. Red Sox undefeated as are the Mariners. Some National League teams the Pirates Giants and Reds. Can't do any better than win them all can you. Well the Mariners set a Major League record for road wins a season ago. Off to another spotless start again this year. Red Sox first 6 and 0 start since that great team of 46 that won the American League pennant and a good scoop over there by Sweeney at first on the throw by Aranda to record the out. Two outs now here in the third. Left fielder Manny Aranda playing deep at third base with Garcia Parra standing in as a hitter. Look at that. He's got to be 15 feet behind the bag at third. Convenient second hop, low throw to first base. Garcia Parra always hustling down the line. The Sox get the run back that the Royals scored in the second. It's again a two run Boston lead. Here's Manny Ramirez. Got an infield hit his first time up. Strike one. The ball into the hole at short that Perez was able to field, but trying to throw from his knees had no chance to get Ramirez. So Boston now with four hits. Royals have three, and it's three to one Red Sox. And one. The Red Sox had some great teams. We're talking about the late 40s. Outstanding ball club. Boston, great, rich history, but you know about the curse of the Bambino, right? Yes. What a hack he had right there. Red Sox with new ownership, new general manager, new manager. They're confident that they can turn things around. Get that curse of the Bambino. They're off to a terrific start this year, having overhauled the Yankees. Now, game and a half lead coming into play here today. Red Sox have the longest current winning streak in the American League, a four gamer. Trying to go 7 0 on the road. And a strikeout of Ramirez. So the inning is over, but the leadoff triple by Damon results in a run. 3 to 1 Red Sox. Tucker will lead off of the Royals on the Royals Television Network. And we're back at Kauffman Stadium with the Red Sox leading the Royals by a count of 3 to 1. Well, you like the new black caps the Royals are wearing? Well, you can get one free next Saturday night. The Royals will be hosting the Baltimore Orioles. The first 25,000 will get the new. Royals black cap courtesy of Fox Sports Net. So get your tickets now for cap night Saturday April 27th. It's nice to see our boys properly clothed. It'll be Michael Tucker Carlos Beltran and Mike Sweeney here in the third inning. Tucker. Looped the ball into left field his first time up and Ramirez couldn't quite catch and Michael ended up at second base. He's ahead of the count here, 2-0. Oh. Four hits for Boston, three for the Royals. The Red Sox lead 3-1. Hey. 
take in for a strike. Last year, Michael split time between the Cincinnati Reds and the Chicago Cubs. Actually played all three outfield positions last year, mostly center field when he was in Chicago. Had nine assists from the outfield a year ago. Pretty solid year for Michael Tucker. Cubs have another guy who plays most of the games in right mm. field, don't they? <laughs> they got a youngster playing center field, a speedster. So young talent in Chicago. The Cubs off kind of a slow start this year. Just six and ten. It's two and two now to Tucker. The count evens out here on that foul ball. And again, a player to the left side. Two and two remains the count on Royal right fielder. Tucker, Beltron, and Sweeney. If anybody gets on, it Banyas. It may take a few runs to win here today. 3-1 Boston right now. The Royals got on the board in the second. And there's a base hit to right for Tucker. Yeah, that pitch well timed. Tucker two for two. There's a start here in the bottom of the third. Well, we talk about being patient on Burkett. Here's a slow, slow curveball right there. And Tucker doing the best he can to stay back, keeping his hands back with enough leverage to get the bat head through the zone and drive the ball into right field. That's a good bit of hitting by Michael Tucker right there. Very patient. Didn't get too anxious on that slow curve. Check out our Toyota League leaders. Team stolen bases. The Royals near the top. White Sox one up on the Royals and Mariners. Tucker, good base runner. Three for three so far this season. And he's going. And they're throwing. And safe at second. The Royals down by a couple of runs. Unleashed the running game. And Tucker now in scoring position on the stolen base. Well, Mirabelli now 0 for 3 and caught stealing so far this year. But his reputation is as a good defensive catcher, strong throwing catcher. So the Royals might want to be a little more careful against him than they were last week against Jason Veritek. But Mirabelli unable to gun down Tucker there. It was ball one to Beltron. Carlos struck out in the first. And that's out of play. Beltrani's first time up. Took a couple of pitches that were kind of marginal. Both were called strikes. He got down in the count early, then struck out. So he has a little better opportunity here this time around. He's got a man out at second with a chance to drive him in. See Beltran with that average of 220. Actually been sliding a little bit recently. He's on a current 0 for 8 stretch. Oh, two balls and a strike to Carlos Beltran. Well, he's done a great job this afternoon of getting men on base and in scoring position early. Got a runner on second base with one out in the first. Got their leadoff man on at second with nobody out in the second. Leadoff hitter on second with nobody out here in the third. Need to cash in. Tried to time the slow breaking ball and got just a little piece of it. Two and two. You say a guy like Burkett gets by on Guile. I mean, he's been around a while. He came to the big leagues with the Giants back in 87. About 11 and a half years experience at the big league level. So, yeah, Guile, he's crafty. A finesse right-hander. You don't see too many all that successful finesse right-handed pitchers. The guys that are successful from the right side are usually pretty much overpowering or have a dominant pitch. He doesn't have one dominant pitch, but pretty good game plan overall when he mixes everything in. He's at that age you've talked about before, 37 years old, where things can change a little bit in your career. How about that record right there? I mean, 141 and, and 119, never really been the, the ace of a staff where you expect him to be a high percentage winner. Pretty good career. That was good ball clubs. Here's the payoff, and he struck him out for the second time. Actually, a foul tip, but there's a big strikeout for Burkett. Well, he, esta he established the fastball in on the hands on Carlos the first time around and then finishes him off with a changeup down and away here. Good arm action, ball about 10 to 12 miles an hour slower than that fastball on the hands. Good sinking action. They'll try on the first out of the inning. Big out for Burkett and the Red Sox. Now with first base open, we'll see how they deal with Mike Sweeney. Now this is where you need that solid bat in the lineup behind Michael to make sure that you at least have to consider pitching to him in this situation. Well, it's been one for six thus far with runners in scoring position. <laughs> Strike to Sweeney. Sweeney. 
for one after a one for three ball game here on Friday. I could love to drive that run home. He has eight runs batted in. Tucker who single to lead off the inning and stole second but he's still there with one out. Long ball could tie the ball game. Inside, inside one and one. Right. Quiet right now here at Kaufman Stadium. The wind continues to blow toward right field from left. One and one to Sweeney. Ball gets away and over to third, Tucker. Now a fly ball could get the run home. Good alert base running by Michael. That ball didn't get that far away from the catcher. Runner on at second base gets a good read on the ball coming into the plate. You see Tucker with that secondary lead. Get out to your stationary lead right there as the pitch is delivered. You want your momentum going to third base. Move your lead up a two or three steps. So moving to his right. Had his momentum going to third. He is already in a good position to break once he saw that ball get away. Be a pass ball charge to the catcher, Maravelli. Two and one to Sweeney. And Mike fouls it into the upper deck, strike two. A tough call to the catcher. That was a curveball that had bounced into the dirt before it got to Maravelli. The pitcher usually gets that charge to him with a wild pitch. And now they are changing it to a wild pitch, so there you are. Might have taken a little longer to get to the replay down in the in the score box. Two and two with a man at third. Two and two the count to Sweeney. Opt him up on the infield. The Royals. Boy, really needed a fly ball right there. Instead, now two out, and the runner's still at third. Let Sweeney with a couple of pop outs here today. And Mike very frustrated as he heads back into the dugout. Four infield pop ups so far in this afternoon's game for the Royals. Hey, I bet knowing Michael Sweeney, something good involving him will happen before this game's over. Right now, he's not very pleased with the events. He's had two pop-outs. He didn't feel the wall Damon hit. I know he feels like he should have. Now here's Ibanez, who drilled a double into right center in the second. You know, in a quiet sort of way, Mike Sweeney is one of the more intense guys you're going to run into. Takes a lot of pride in his game and does not want to give away any at-bats ever, especially with a runner on a third base in less than two out. Big opportunity for Ibanez now to pick him up. Going off. Ibanez double earlier this game as his fifth of the season. Well, he's got a two-out hit from Fabulous to score their other run. They need a two-out hit right here. Instead, it's three and zero. Oh. Ibanez may not see a strike. Unless Burkett makes a mistake, Joe Randa would be up there next. And we've seen Rollo Labanias with a green light several times already this year on 3-0 counts. When he had it right there, and he hits a ground ball to the shortstop. Oh, Royals just unable to get the big hit here in the third inning. They got the leadoff man on, and as far as third, couldn't score him. Still 3-1 Boston on the Royals television network. This game is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, bringing people together. Royals trail 3-1 to one as the game heads to the top of the fourth inning at Kauffman Stadium with Paul Splitorf. I'm Bob Davis. Friday night, Royals couldn't get anything going against Pedro Martinez. Here today, they're getting some guys in scoring position, but so far, only one run. Well, the hits are even at four each, so it's not like John Burkett is shutting them down right. like Pedro Martinez did here on Friday night, but you need to capitalize, and so far, the Red Sox have done a better job than the Royals. Sox will come to bat in the fourth. It'll be Dawback, Hillenbrand, and Trot Nixon with a play-by-play. -play. Here's Paul. And Riker needs to find a way to keep himself in his club in this game as we move on to the fourth inning. Brian Dawback leading things off. He is their first baseman this afternoon. Dawback, Hillenbrand, and Nixon, the first three scheduled against Dan Riker, who's looking for his first win of the season. This is his fourth start in appearance. The Royals 0-3 in games that Dan has started so far this year. It's a ball and a strike to Brian Daubach. Royals earned run average team-wise against the Red Sox this year by 
four point six. Winning two out of three in Boston before being shut out here on Friday night four to nothing. Pedro Martinez really tough in that ball game. Two balls and a strike to Daba. Pedro Martinez looks on from the third base dugout. But there was a time where the Red Sox thought the Kauffman Stadium was a house of horrors. They had a terrible time here at Kauffman Stadium until well, the late 90s. That's when they went to natural grass, brought the fences in a little bit. And they've now won 14 of the last 20 games played in this ballpark. That's over the last four years, and they no longer refer to this as a, as a ballpark that they just can't play in. Three, two. The great Royals teams of the 70s and 80s really built for this park and the artificial surface. And Boston was built for Fenway Park, right? So they'd be somewhat understandable. They'd have problems here, and they did. Drive up the right field line, but a foul back into the seats. Three balls, two strikes again. Well, for years, the Red Sox have gone for bigger, stronger players that maybe didn't have the speed, agility, or quickness that some of the players have today. Helped them in their ballpark, but really hurt them when they went out on the road. Now, this year, they've gone to a different style. They signed Johnny Damon. Expect him to add a lot of much needed speed. Manny Ramirez, another slugger. Shea Hillenbrand looks like he's going to be a solid player. Trot Nixon, a pretty good athlete. Bit of defense up the middle was Garcia, Parr, and Sanchez. In fact, Johnny featured on the cover of Baseball Weekly last week. Talking about a speed guy needing to get off to a good start with the Red Sox and change what's happened to him over the last couple of years. Off to a good start this year. Again, the payoff pitch. Hammered to right field. It's high, it's deep, and Michael Tucker just looks up and watches that one splash down in the water display. Boy, did Dawbuck put a charge in that one, his third round tripper of the season. And it's 4-1 to one, Boston. And Dawbuck's third home run this season against Royals pitching. And this one went a long way in a short time. It is now a 4-1 to one ball game. The pitch right out over the plate, and Dawback didn't miss it. Fifth hit for the Red Sox. First home run of the game here today, and 4-1 to one Boston. Into the upper tank wow. of the water display. It's the fourth home run surrendered by Reichert this year. Shea Hillenbrand stands in. Hillenbrand popped up his first time up. Hillenbrand opened the season with a 12-game hitting streak been better than 20 years since the Red Sox have had a player hit in the first 12 games of a season. Well, he's hit in 13 of their first 14 games. Down on the count here, 0 and 2. Red Sox have scored in each of the last three innings. We're calling that home run 440 feet as it's still a bobbles around out there in the water in right field. I don't doubt the 440. No, I don't doubt any bit of it. No. Man, what a blast. On a day where you wouldn't figure the ball to carry all that well. Brian Daba. Broken 0 for 15 with his first plate appearance today. A base hit to center field and then a huge home run. Holds it one and two here. Well, let's check in with our Aflac trivia question for the day. Who is the Royals all time leader in career batting average? Isn't that an easy question? I think it's George Brett, huh? We'll know here in another half inning or so. And down on strikes goes Hillenbrand. So Reichert able to bounce back after giving up the leadoff home run to get his third strike out of the day. A good effort here by Reichert. Right fielder Trot Nixon. on that delivery, so he gets out number one in the fourth. Hey, that might not be as obvious a question as it appears. Now, career doesn't mean necessarily a 15, 18 year run. It's a trick question. Oh. Well, we had those. Nobody better than that guy, though. I don't care what the answer might be. Yeah, they could never say you're crazy with that guess. <laughs> no. <laughs> Here's Trot Nixon. Double home of pair of runs, his first time up. Strike on Nixon. Nixon is now hit in five of his last six ball games. 
The Red Sox, kind of like the Royals on their last road trip, had to cool their heels here on this trip with a couple of days in Kansas City. They were off Thursday while the Royals were playing in Minnesota, so they got to town early. And of course, no game here yesterday. How about the Royals? They're having trouble getting consecutive games in. They had two games, two days off the first week. Had a day off in week two of the season. Three days off this week if you consider the rain out in Cleveland on Sunday. The regularly scheduled off day on Monday rained out here yesterday. Royals in the middle of their, what was going to be their longest stretch of consecutive games. Nine straight. So you go four straight days, then one off, four straight more games. Ground ball to the second baseman, Fabulous, and he's there to retire next at two out. Second game to follow. The Royals are going to have to make a roster move. Looks like Brian Ricard is going to make the start in the afternoon contest. The, the nightcap of this one, if you will. Ricar will be the Royals' a seventh starting pitcher this year. Allard Baird will have to come up with a roster move, as you mentioned. But Ricard will be the seventh guy to start a game as a Royal pitcher this year. Just three weeks into the season. His injuries have played a role in that. Last week, for the first time, got to the position where they needed a number five starter. That was in the Saturday game at Cleveland. A two hopper to Perez at short. Should be no problem. And the Royals out of the inning. But the Red Sox get another run. It's a leadoff home run by Brian Daubach. A no doubter all the way. And through three and a half, the Red Sox on top on the Royals television network. On the Boston's fourth run of action in the bottom of the fourth, our Aflac trivia question. Who's the Royals' all-time leader in career batting average? Of course, George Brett's always a good guess, but my partner indicated, hey, it's a trick question. And the answer is Jose Offerman. Now with the Red Sox, he played for the Royals three years, hit 303 one year, 297, and 315 for a career average of 306. In fact, that third year, he led the league in triples. Offerman, a very good offensive player. Three years of the Royals and one point higher than the Hall of Famer George Brett. The Red Sox signed him. They had first base open, and that was the plan to use him as a designated hitter and first baseman. There you see the top five career batting averages for the Royals. Mike Sweeney right in the middle of a pretty select bunch. This is Joe Randall leading things off. Joe came in with a two-game hitting streak. 0 for 1 here this afternoon. And they're having a pretty good year hitting against Red Sox pitching. He's 4 for 12. Now two balls and a strike. It'll be Randa, Perez, and Maine as the Royals bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Royals have had base runners, in fact, have had hits in every inning here this afternoon against John Burkett. Just off the disabled list, out with a bad shoulder. And there's a drive to right field, high and deep, and near the foul pole. If it's fair, it's gone. Home run, Royals. Joe Randa with his first of the year, and the Royals add on another one. Now trail it four to two. Well, a good start here in the fourth. The Royals have been getting guys in scoring position and having trouble getting them home. Well, Joe strokes his first home run of the year, drives in his 12th run overall. Boy, is it good to have him in the lineup after missing a couple of games. Now 4-2 to two ball game, and the hits are even at five each. Take a look at Randa's first home run of the season, up and in, and he pulled it down the line. The only question initially was, would it stay fair, but turned out to be no problem. Randa's first home run makes it a two-run ball game. And Nafee Perez trying to bunt his way on. Bunts too hard, but right at the third baseman, Shea Hillebrand picks up the ground ball to get Nafee at first. The catcher, the Royals now with five hits May. in the ball game. Three of those have gone for extra bases. Through there, keeping a close eye on Burkett. He's making his first appearance of the year, coming off the DL with a little shoulder inflammation from spring training. This could be his last inning. They've got activity out of the bullpen. You know he would be on a pitch count in a game like this. But he needs this inning to move the ball game along. So I keep a close eye on him. Brent May now stands in for the Royals. Walked his first time up. Well, Tim Wakefield now working in the Red Sox bullpen. He is the knuckleballer. Slated for long relief here this afternoon. Maybe preparing right now for the sixth inning. Uh huh. Outside, a, a ball and a strike to Maine. Burkett right at, right now at 59 pitches, a so number 60 coming up. Pretty tidy number, really. Hold the string and Maine way out in front. Well, if he gets through this inning with no more damage being done, I got to think that Grady Little will be very happy what he got out of John Burkett here this afternoon in his first start. 
12 game winner a year ago a three point earned run average 3.04 that was third in the National League as far as the top earned run averages in the league. A solid season a year ago with the Atlanta Braves a 10 game winner the previous year. Two balls two strikes here to Maine. Left side. Red Sox play straight up for Maine in their outfield. In fact, pretty shallow in center field with Johnny Damon. Feels slightly as a pull hitter. Shallow Damon is in center. Here comes the 2 2. Burkett's a real good bowler. He has 10 300 games in bowling. Not only a great career as a, or at least a solid career, the major league pitcher, he's an outstanding bowler. <laughs> that looks like he's getting ready to roll it down alley number three, doesn't it? Off the end of the bat, Hillenbrand, the third baseman, hands it and throws to first in time. He just picked up that split. The second baseman, Carlos Bayless. There are some similarities between those two sports. The of the ball and looking at a, at a target down the road a little bit. The release is quite a bit different. So many of the players have fundraisers with golf tournaments right. and fishing tournaments. That might be an opportunity for John Burke at a some kind of bowling tournament and a fundraiser. Been in a couple of those. Carlos Pablos will be next for the Royals. Has maybe their biggest hit of the ball game. Two out single came in the second inning. Picked up an RBI. Royals haven't gotten many timely hits here today. Had also broken an 0 for 7 stretch for Carlos Fables. Carlos asks for him. Receives time. Members of the Kansas City Wizards across the way. With a long range view out there. Well, you got to do your stretching exercises somewhere. <laughs> Tony, Tony Miola. Miola. Yeah. Well, you talk about athletes. Wow, those guys can run forever. Uh huh. And do. Line drive, right center field. Damon on the run. Not going to get there, and he's going to have to chase it a while. It goes to the wall. Pavlis around second on his way to third. And safe at third base is Pavlis. Pavlis with another two out hit in today's game. What? Good to see the ball jump off that young guy's bat. Hit that ball with some authority to right field. It is 15th. Big league triple. And uh, he got that ball by Damon, and it had to roll all the way to the fence before Johnny could run it down out there. Well, good. Carlos generated a little bat speed right there. And he had the play in front of him. So he's at third with two out. So that keeps the inning alive for Nabla. Hadn't okay, gotten the ball out of the infield yet this afternoon. Abel's on at third base, his first triple of the season. Chuck jammed badly his first time up, popped up to the shortstop. Popped up to the first baseman his last time in. Swing there, no contact. It's a ball and a strike. Knobloch can hit for some power. Had a favorable count right there. Took a pretty healthy swing at a fastball. It's a ball and a strike. So the ball is about hit the Red Sox. Two runs, six hits, Kansas City. Four runs on just five hits for Boston. That's a ball and two strikes to Knobloch. Burkett struggling to get out of the bottom of the fourth inning. Home run leading off the fourth for the Royals. Ables now at third with a triple. Drive knocked down by Daubach. Scrambled to his feet to get Knobloch. Oh, what a good defensive play by Brian Daubach, their first baseman. Took extra bases away from Knobloch, but the Royals got the leadoff home run by Joe Randa. The Royals continue to work to get back into this one, trailing four to two on the Royals television network. This afternoon's Royals telecast is brought to you by Subway. Come in today and let Subway show you how good a fresh-made sandwich can be. 
and by Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. And by Dodge. To get anywhere in life, you got to grab life by the horns. Dodge. Roberto Hernandez still out of action for the Royals. We'll be glad to get him back in that bullpen. There's Sanchez, first ball hitting. That's the fly ball to right field. Michael Tucker there to retire Ray. Ray 0 for 2 in this afternoon's game. So good start in the inning for Dan Riker. Royals have actually out hit Boston Johnny now, 6 David. to 5. Still trail by a couple of runs. Boy, good defensive play. Dawback closing out the Royals, and that ball got through. It'd be a one run game. And now block probably at second. Now here's Damon. Only one for two. Actually, it could have been two for two. It took a great play by Nafi Perez to retire him in the first. Well, he's pretty close to two for two and pretty close to 0 for two, isn't he? Riker working quickly. Damon jammed by that pitch. It snowballs two strikes. Damon's now hitting five straight. Seven hits during that stretch. Overall, he's hitting 13 of their first 15 ball games. When you look at Damon, you don't only look at the hitting streaks and the stolen bases. You look at the on-base percentage. 385 coming into play today. So Damon is off to his first good start in several years as he bounces the ball to Fabulous. That's quickly two outs. And Reichert starting to get more ground balls in the inning. Had two ground ball outs Designated in the fourth. Had a ground ball out in the third. Had a ground ball out here in the fifth. And Damon now one for three today. Red Sox won the opener here on Friday night behind Pedro Martinez. Four to nothing in that one. And here this afternoon, four to two as Jose Offerman stands in. Riker looking for his first win of the campaign. And one pitched Offerman misses down and in. Offerman 0 for 1 officially this afternoon. Lined out in the first inning. Also went to left field the next time up. Got a sacrifice fly. First time we've seen Offerman in the lineup in the games we've played against the Red Sox as he bounces one to Sweeney and the Red Sox go in order. In the top of the fifth inning, second time this Ladies afternoon that Riker's gotten him in order. Halfway through from Kauffman Stadium, it's the Red Sox 4, the Royals 2 on the Royals Television Network. Here to Johnny Damon and the Red Sox as the home team bats in the bottom of the fifth. Elsewhere around the American League, plenty of goings on on our Ford American League scoreboard. What a battle between the Yanks and the Jays. Royals and Devil Rays locked up in the eighth inning. White Sox leading the Detroit Tigers their game at Comiskey Park. Twins trying to beat the Indians again. They have a one run lead in the fourth and two West Coast games. Mariners not started yet with the Rangers and tonight Angels A's. Ford American League scoreboard. Riles will have their two three and four hitters to begin the bottom of the fifth inning against right handed starter John Burkett. Burkett's gone all the way for the Red Sox today. And Michael Tucker's had a good day already. Two for two. And stolen base. Shows bunt. Popped it up foul. No balls, two strikes on Tucker. Michael Tucker moved up from his regular spot in the middle part of the batting order, the number two hitter in this afternoon's game. These are juggling his lineup for really the first time this year. Brady Little, on the other hand, has gone with a number of different lineups for the Red Sox. So he needed to take a little better look at their club. He wasn't hired as manager until late in spring training. Little over in the third base dugout, longtime bench coach, both in Cleveland and in Boston. This is his first go round as a big league manager. Two balls, two strikes on Tucker. Swing, he fouled it straight back. The are hoping to break a current two game losing streak here this afternoon. A couple games under 500 here at their. Home field. Last year they went 500 against these Red Sox. That's three balls, two strikes to Tucker. Well, he should get a hittable pitch here, you would figure. Uh, Burkett doesn't want to walk him leading off the inning. He started out 0-2 on Michael. Part of the thinking with moving Tucker to that second spot is he'll get more fastballs, and he shoots that one into right field. Tucker with a three for three afternoon, so apparently pretty comfortable hitting second in the lineup. Uh, how long will they go with Burkett right now? They've got Wakefield throwing again out in the bullpen. 
Tucker, a nice at bat right here. We're getting down 0 and 2, he gets a single to right, so he has a bloop double and two singles, a stolen base, and he's on leading off the bottom of the fifth. Tucker's always had a pretty good looking swing, hadn't he? Talk about a good looking swing. Here's Carlos Beltran. Carlos, a tough day going so far. 0 for 2 with a couple strikeouts. Outside, ball one. See Carlos's average in at 216. It's number 80 for John Burke. And he Ooh. said we have a throw to first base, and he almost got Tucker leaning. Tucker ran his last time on base. So Burkett, who normally throws to first base quite a bit, and thrown over there much here this afternoon. Quick move right there to try to drive Tucker a little bit closer to the bat. Burkett, three plus years with the Texas Rangers. He was a regular in their rotation at that time. Another snap throw to first. I think they're running here down by a pair and Beltron and Sweeney and Ibanez, the do-up batters. It's a great time to run. Yeah. One on, nobody out, favorable count to your hitter. So uh -huh. if they go to the plate, little chance that they'll pitch out. Tucker's not running. The changeup drifts outside. Well, fans, get your tickets now for the first ever bobblehead night here at Kauffman Stadium. It'd be Saturday, May 11th. The Royals will be taking on the Cleveland Indians that night. And the first 25,000 fans will receive this limited edition Carlos Beltran bobblehead doll, courtesy of Dodge. Saturday, May 11th. See you at the ballpark. Low ball three and the snap wow. throw to first base. Tucker has about as big a lead as you could get over there. He's had a couple close plays, one from the pitcher and one from the catcher. When you barely get back like that, that's your maximum lead, right? Well, he's not shy about whipping it down there. We talked about his throwing ability. He's pretty good. Cross at the knees. It's three balls and a strike to Beltran. Carlos now in a mini slump. He's 0 for his last nine. 0 for 5 in this series, but a few of the Royals got the collar here on Friday night with Pedro Martinez pitching. Ground ball to Sanchez. He'll get the lead man at second and no more. Well, that's pretty good play by Ray Sanchez. You got speed out there on the bases. By far the easier out is at first, but with just a two-run lead. They wanted to get the lead man, and Sanchez going wide to his left. Able to get that lead runner at second. Sanchez, a shortstop throughout most of his big league career, but came to the big leagues as a second baseman. That was back with the Chicago Cubs, so he has a lot of experience at that position. He's off to a good start, just one error so far this year. Now here's Mike. The infield pop up so far today. Well, was actually upgrade on the bases with speed on at first base now with Beltran. has three swipes. Left the steal there. Did not go. Snowballs and a strike to Sweeney. Mike now five for 18 against Red Sox pitching this year. Burke just had runners on in every inning against him. In fact, the Royals have stranded runners in every inning here today. Yeah, that's been the frustration, not only stranding runners, but runners in scoring position. So they can cash in here in the fifth. Sweeney, two frustrating at bats so far. Runners have stranded five runners in the ball game. Four of those have been in scoring position, and there goes Beltron. There's a foul ball right side. Do it over again. Beltron had a pretty good jump. Sweeney hit one in the gap like that. Runner in motion and the speed of Beltron. Mike has averaged 115 RBIs per season over the last three years. Mike finished with 99 a season ago. A ball and two strikes on Sweeney. Another snap throw to first base. Burkett now keeping a close eye on the base runners. Not doing so much of that early on in the game. From the belt, here comes the one two. Breaking ball stays downstairs. 
Red Sox had a slow finish to the season a year ago. Very difficult month of September. In fact, they had one stretch where they won just six times in 21 games, but still finished three games over 500. Had a lot of changes on their roster before the start of this year. 17 new players from a season ago. Towards the right field corner, that's Trot Nixon into the corner to haul it down. And Beltran. Beltran thought there were two outs. Mental mistakes on the bases was not running on the pitch, but was running on contact. So Carlos Beltran embarrassed right there, but the work on the bases. The Royals had a promising start with the leadoff single by Tucker, but nothing else going after that. Still trailing on the Royals television network. On the Royal roster today, two on, two out for Boston. Bailey had his first career save. Royal win at Boston April 10th. How will he fare here today in relief? There goes Damon. They're going to throw through. And actually, Perez cutting the ball off on the edge of the grass. Keep the runner at third. Johnny Damon with his fifth stolen base. Nixon hangs on at third base for Boston. Five steals on the year for Damon. He's been caught just once. It was ball one to Offerman. Now it's a one ball, one strike count. When Corey Bailey is on, he gets a lot of ground balls. Normally has very good sinking action on his fastball. Pretty good velocity. Last year, his best year, 53 ball games, three and a half earned run average. Strike over the inner edge. One and two. Offerman has faced him twice. He's 0 for 2 against Corey Bailey. The Royals could get an out right here. You think they still have a great chance to perhaps come back in this game. But if Offerman delivers a hit, Boston could double their lead. They're up right now 4 to 2. And a drive to right. Hit by Offerman and hit pretty well. And it is a home run. They get three runs out of that swing by Jose Offerman. And the Red Sox with a huge inning here in the seventh now leads seven to two. Well, you think in terms of line drive base hits with Offerman he doesn't homer all that much. But he hit that ball down the line and it had just enough to get into the seats out there and right. Well, check out the sequence of pitches on the deliveries to Jose Offerman, the pitch before the home run ball from Corey Bailey. Trying to get the ball down and away, and there's the breaking ball. Inside corner, did not get that call. Then he comes back with a pitch down and in. Most left-handed hitters, good low ball hitters, and if they got a power zone, it would be usually right there. That ball looked like it might have been out of the strike zone. Extended up, it ended up out of the ballpark. And the Sox blow a big hole in this game here in the seventh inning. Second home run of the year for Offerman, his 50th career home run. Royals are suddenly down by five and a pitch up and into Nomar. Two and oh. The count on Garcia Parra. And a bouncer to Randa just inside the line on a long throw gets Nomar Garcia Parra. But damage has been done. A three run home run by Jose Offerman here in the seventh inning. And the Red Sox move a 4-2 game to 7-2 Boston on the Royals Television Network. Offerman, a big day here this afternoon. Had an RBI in the third inning, had a three-run home run in the top of the seventh inning. The Red Sox lead 7-2 as we take a look at the advanced auto parts game summary. Red Sox, seven runs, nine hits, two runs, seven hits for the Royals. Brian Daubach, three for three, a solo home run. Michael Tucker, he's got a good day going. He has three hits in the ball game. It's also stolen a base. Our advanced auto parts game summary. Brent Maine leads off of the Royals against the knuckleballer Wakefield. I tell you, when things are going well, and Boston's 10 and 4, they've won four in a row, and they are undefeated on the road. When you plug players in, Offerman, they've had a Dickens of a time really getting him many at bats. He's driven in four runs today, and another guy has battled for playing time. Brian Daubach in there today, three for three with a booming home run. So that when it's going well, you plug guys in and they produce. Now ball makes it two and two to Brent Main, and Boston is going well. If they win this game, they're up by five here in the seventh. They won't.
will be 7-0 and on the road for Grady Little. Well, the Red Sox had scored 28 runs over their last three ball games. Remember, they had just four here on Friday night behind Pedro Martinez. So a pretty good offensive ball club breaking loose here late today. Well, the Royals, I talked about how a big at bat that was for Offerman for both teams. A single would have made it a four-run lead, but he got a home run. An out would kept the Royals within two, and now here's a routine ground ball hit to Nomar Garcia Parra, who guns down Brent Main. Second Not a lot of things Carlos you can point to for the Royals today. Now a big two-out hit for Carlos Fabless, who also has a triple in the ball game. Joe Randa hits his first home run, but well, the Royals early on had guys in scoring position, couldn't get them in, lost another man on base. Forgot how many outs there were in the ball game, and you get doubled off. Now here's Fabless, who has a single and a triple, but well, the Royals playing a hot ball club and down by five late. Tony Muser shaking up the lineup here this afternoon, inserting Michael Tucker into the number two spot in the batting order. Raul Montabanez hitting behind Swinney. Nafi Perez dropped to the seventh spot. Muser hoping his club could have that kind of offensive day, the kind of day the Red Sox are having. Austin plugs in a pitcher who had just gotten off the disabled list. They have to feel pretty good about what they got from John Burkett. Was digging hard, but he'll be thrown out by the third baseman Hillenbrand. Yes. Wait. Well, the Royals trailing here late as we check Second our Southwest hitter, schedule of National League action. The Braves leading the Marlins in the ninth inning of their ball game. Pirates up on the Phillies. Bows are leading the Mets. The Brewers, their new manager, had the lead in their game. Reds up on the Cubs. Astros so far shutting out the Giants. Later start, Padres Dodgers, Dodgers Stadium. And likewise, the Rockies and Diamondbacks in Phoenix. There's a popper off the bat of Knobloch. Second baseman Sanchez takes care of it, and the Royals are brushed aside quickly in the bottom of the seventh inning. We go to the eighth, still 7 2 Boston on the Royals Television Network. Hey, Larissa, we need donuts. Okay, Kenya, donuts are on the way. I get the donuts. Not these kind of donuts. Here's your donut. Who needs one? Hey, I got the donuts. Yeah, these kind of donuts. Join the fun. Dugout suites available now. Call 1-800-6-ROYALS. And with Paul Spudor, Bob Davis at Coffin Stadium. Top of the eighth, Corey Bailey, the relief pitcher. On for the Royals, Bailey gave up the three-run home run to Jose Offerman in the seventh, giving Boston their current 7-2 lead. And now Bailey will have to deal with the middle third, Ramirez, Dawback, and Hillenbrand. Manny Ramirez, just an infield hit today in three at-bats. He hit into a double play his last time up. But Boston, a big three-run blast in the seventh inning, now leading by five after the Red Sox one here Friday night, four to nothing behind Pedro. These two teams play a second game here today. Wrap up the season's business between Kansas City and Boston. One and one now to Manny Ramirez. Well, long way to go, obviously. We're just three weeks into the season, but when you think about the Red Sox, if they stay healthy, they weren't healthy last year, but. Pedro and Nomar and everybody, they've got a shot at the AL East, don't they? Well, they lost so many of their frontline players, their nucleus players, to make the serious run at the title a season ago. The Royals have Corey Bailey into the ballgame. Now, in a doubleheader, you handle your bullpen a little differently than you might otherwise. The Royals want to save some bullpen for the second game here this afternoon. And Corey Bailey, the Royals have to find a way to get him back on track. Tony Muser knows that he was one of his most dependable setup men last year, and really in the same role this year. That's not a good sign right there. Straight away center field. A tremendous home run by Manny Ramirez. Well, Bailey has faced three batters and two of them have hit home runs. Manny Ramirez number five for the season. And it's now eight to two Boston. Now Nipper back to the phone First back to the world bullpen. Take a look at this last offering to Manny Ramirez. This is a. Ball pretty much centered in the middle part of the plate. Brent Main was positioned to the outside corner, and Corey Bailey didn't get it to the outside corner. 
Danny Ramirez got it to the bank and straightaway center field. Third home run of the game for Boston. Dawback, Offerman, and now Ramirez. The batter is now Dawback, who is three for three. And it's a four for four ball game for Dawback. Boy, what a day he is having as we take a look at our Pizza Hut perfect delivery. Shane, Brian Dawback had trouble getting playing time recently. This is the home run that he loaded to unloaded to lead off the bottom of the fourth inning. Dawback, the solo shot is third round trip of the season. As you mentioned Bob a four for four day. Making quite a bid for playing time isn't he? Kind of a crowded situation at either DH or first base for Boston. Look at his numbers against the Royals. Nine for 16. Three homers. A home run cut there by Hillenbrand, but he missed. Strike one. If you're Grady Little, who do you use as your designated hitter in game two? Jose Offman, a switch hitter? Ryan Daubach, a left-handed hitter. Every manager should have a problem like that. They're all hitting. Who do we play? Popped up right side. Trio of Royals giving chase. But it's into the seats about a row deep behind the tarp down there. Yelicenzio now working in the Royals bullpen. He's had a couple of appearances for the Royals on that last road trip. Blowout win in Minneapolis. First one here at Kauffman Stadium didn't go so well. Corey Bailey trying to find some answers here. He's given up three hits, facing four batters, two home runs. One two to Hillenbrand. Slowly hit chopper out at second, and that's all they'll get. Brand reaches on the fielder's choice. One out here in the inning. Top of the, the eight, right Boston fielder, batting Nixon. and leading eight to two. They've now out hit the Royals 11 to seven. Now here is Trot Nixon. He's had a productive ball game. He got a big double in the second to get the Sox on the board. He drove in a pair. He got a single in the seventh and came around on the Offerman home run. One low. Corey Bailey was in 53 ball games, a career major league best last year with the Royals. The Royals without Roberto Hernandez in that bullpen. You got guys who set up men or whatever, but the roles change without the veteran closer. Corey Bailey is. Had some problems in some games this year, really starting on, on opening day. The ball bounces away from Maine, but not far enough for advance for the runner, Hillenbrand. Well, obviously, Tony Muser does not have a set closer, but there would be any one of several guys considered for that role should they come in, say, maybe the seventh or even the eighth inning. I think Tony Muser at this stage, if the guy has a quality eighth inning, you're going to see him out there for the ninth. Have to find a way to get Corey Bailey going a little bit better than what he is right now. Jason Grimsley would be another guy that you could see late. Guys that had a solid season a year ago. Roberto Hernandez gets back. Everybody plugged into the same role this year in that bullpen to what they held down and pitched pretty well at least in the second half of last year. Now it's a three hit game for Nixon. The catcher Doug Stein, another Mirabelli. guy out in that Royals bullpen who is very important to this ball club. Al Nipper on the right. Manager Tony Muser watching Boston now with 12 hits, three of them here in the eighth inning. I don't think that they'd want to use Asensio in the middle part of an inning. Ideally, they'd like to have him start off a frame. A guy that has had some problems throwing strikes in his couple outings this year. Give him some room to work. Corey Bailey would be asked to get out of this jam. All one to Doug Mirabelli, the catcher. Boston are they something that this would be their fifth consecutive win it would make them 11 and 4 overall and 7 and 0 on the road and they're already 3 and 1 against the Yankees they are loving these events back in New England Valley ahead in the count, two and zero oh with two on and one out. Now it's two balls and two strikes. Uh, two balls and a strike. I beg your pardon. Two and one. 
Bob you talk about the Red Sox having won three out of four games against the Yankees they should get a leg up on the Yankees this year their next series is also going to be played at Fenway Park a four game set so they've got eight games against the Yankees at their ballpark before they ever have to go on to New York good pick up by Nafee out at second out at first what a double play started by Nafee Perez well, you weren't sure he'd even get to the ball and they turn two so the inning is over but the Sox get the home run by Manny Ramirez to add to their lead. 8-2 Red Sox and the Royals Television Network. Hey, Kansas City, let's play ball. All summer long, you can catch your hometown heroes, the Kansas City Royals, right here on KMBC Channel 9 and more TV 29. And you can get a free 2002 Royals schedule at any local participating Subway. Subway, eat fresh. You'll get a listing of all televised Royals games here on KMBC and more TV 29. And a 2002 schedule of events. Get your Subway Royals schedule today. Right here on Channel 9. Ramirez, the home run to straightaway center field was his fifth of the season and stretched that Red Sox lead out to 8-2 to two over the Royals as we move on to the bottom of the eighth. And this is Carlos Baerga. He goes in to play second base for the Red Sox. So Ray Sanchez out of the ballgame. Michael Tucker will lead things off for the Royals. Tucker, our hearty star of the game for the Royals. He has had a pretty productive ball game with three hits and a stolen base. Michael Tucker moved up to the second spot of the order, has a double to left and a couple of singles to right. He is our Royals Hardy star of the game. We'll see how he fares in his fourth plate appearance. Looking for a four hit game. Royals find themselves down by six with two more at bats. A very close ball game heading to the seventh, just four to two, but a two out three run homer by Jose Offerman. Then a solo blast by Ramirez in the eighth. And the Boston lead is up to six. Well, that six run lead certainly not insurmountable if you're a Royals player but you got to get a start here. It's your lead off man on base you need to bunch some base hits. You can't afford to give away any outs right now. And a slow roller Hillenbrand with the play near the bag. Oh, a good strong throw gets Michael Tucker. The key to Wakefield is trying to get somebody on if you get base runners you could you do some damage against this knuckleballer, but hard to get on. The Royals have not had a base runner since he came in. He's retired seven in a row. Now here's Beltron. Carlos 0 for 3. Strike one. This would not appear to be a good matchup for Carlos Beltron. Beltron's always had trouble with off speed stuff, anyhow. Let's see if he can wait back on the knuckle. Well, as we had only two hits Friday night. You have seven hits today, including a homer and a couple of doubles and a triple, but only two runs to show for it. One and two. John Burkett, the Boston starter, went the first five innings. He would qualify as the winning pitcher. Popped up near home plate. Bella. Didn't even throw the mask away. Just made the grab with a glove for the second out. Just got it into fair territory. Well, Beltron 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. Carlos, I'm sure, just soon forget about today and turn the page. Maybe you can do that in game two. Here's Mike Sweeney. Mike, also a lot of frustration today. 0 for 3. For his efforts. Two out, nobody on, bottom of the eighth. Oh, and Wakefield is on, and he is getting strikeouts and ground outs and pop ups. You wonder how anybody ever gets hits against the guy, but. And he's so obviously durable as a knuckleballer. Oh, Bob, you can play catch forever, and that's what it looks like knuckleballers are doing. Yeah. The ball's up there fluttering and dancing and going all over the place. And these guys really don't even need to warm up. I mean, you look at him right there and you say, that's just a nice, easy game of soft toss. And you could do that all afternoon. I mean, you're never going to wear down a knuckleballer. That's why it's kind of nice to have him on your team because you can abuse him, work him every other day if you need to. But if you've got injuries or if you're coming out of the bullpen, you've got your starters struggling. I mean, he can work today. He can work again tomorrow. Different kind of animals. Wow. A strikeout of Sweeney. Mike didn't look good on that cut at the knuckler. 
Wakefield has faced nine. He's retired all nine. And we go to the ninth. Boston up by half a dozen on the Royals Television Network. Part of the Royals will play the Tigers. The first of a three game. Royals general manager Allard Baird looks on as he sees his club on the short end of the scoreboard. Sox 8-2 lead here as we move on to the top of the ninth inning. And we get a look at a Miguel Asensio. Asensio appearing for the third time this year. High earned run average because it had a disappointing debut here at Kauffman Stadium, but pretty effective in the series up in Minneapolis in midweek. So he will get an inning of work here, and he'll... Face Carlos Baerga, first of all, who ended the game in the last half inning defensively at second base. In the top of the order, Damon and Offerman. Strike one. Makes you wonder if Baerga will be into the ball game in the second game of the doubleheader. A lot of managers like to use a guy as a pinch hitter if they're going to play him the next day, or maybe in this case, the next game today. Inside, ball one. Senzio pitched the ninth inning the other night in that 16 to 3 Royals victory. Did give up a couple of hits, but no runs. Got the three outs. And a liner to right. Tucker going back. Can't get it. Hops the wall out there. And Baerga, the veteran, hit first into second base with a leadoff double. Baerga. That's a base hit. The 13th Dana. hit of the game for Boston. This was about as good a hit looking hitter as there was in the American League when he was a member of the Cleveland Indians a number of years ago. Doesn't look like he's must, lost much as he laces a line drive over the head of Tucker in right field. With the head first dive at second. Played in an independent league last year, hitting 315. Batter now is Johnny Damon as they swing around to the top of the order for Boston. Eight to two Red Sox. They've now out hit the Royals 13 to seven. Two and oh. Six run Boston lead. Miguel Asensio, the third Royal pitcher. Reichard went six and two thirds. Bailey an inning and a third. Johnny pulls one. Well foul. Strike one. Senzio in spring training. Here in seven ball games, a little over 10 innings of work. He walked 10 guys while striking out two. It tells you that he struggled with the command of his pitches in camp. A lofty earned run average. Heyman hits a pretty deep drive to right. Tucker back, and this one's gone. A home run for Johnny Damon. Just kept carrying into the bullpen out there. Damon's second home run of the year. 10 to 2 Boston. Well, this young man pitched an A ball last year. You know, at best, that is a terrific jump in one year. It Designated hitter Jose Opperman. Team had to been stunned when he got taken off of a triple A roster. The Philadelphia Phillies protecting a guy right there. Figure he's an A ball. Nobody would take him off a triple A roster and keep him in the big leagues all season long. Behind in the count there to Johnny Damon at two balls and a strike. Damon put a charge in that one. Well, Damon now with a home run and a triple in this first game of the doubleheader. Stolen base mixed in along with a walk. So he's had a great day. So has the man in the batter's box now. Jose Offerman. And a roller foul outside first. Offerman has driven in four runs today with a home run and a sacrifice fly. Distance on Johnny Damon's home run, 375 feet. Just got it over the gate in the Royals bullpen. 21 year old Miguel Asensio. Roll to the right side and on through a base hit. Offerman now, two hits in the game. Still nobody out here in the top of the ninth. The shortstop, Delmar Garcia Parra. Now here's Nomar. The Red Sox kind of fattening some stats right now. It was a four to two ball game not too long ago is now ten to two. And he 
threw that one in the dirt well in front of the plate. Ball one. And Bob, this ball game looking a whole lot like the ball game on Wednesday night in Minneapolis. That was a close ball game all night long until the Royals had a nine run inning late. Won that one going away. I think the final was 16 3. Right. Derek Lowe who pitches the next game for Boston having some of the thoughts that probably Jeff Supon had that that night watching knowing he was pitching the next day. Although I tell you the way Boston playing right now they are capable of scoring a lot of runs every time out. Jeff Supon pitched a creditable ball game but lost Eric Milton the day after the one sided Royals win. Now two and one to Nomar. Red Sox are going to have a long day. They've got this doubleheader. They travel after the ball game today on to Baltimore, where they'll finish out this road trip. Second road trip of the year. An eight gamer for the Red Sox. And a fly ball by Nomar Garcia Para. Ibanez, right in front of the track, makes the catch. Didn't get quite all of that one. There's the first out of the ninth inning. So many times the recent series between the Royals and Red Sox, particularly at Fenway, the Red Sox win game one, the Royals bounce back in the second game and go on to win the series. Left but fielder Manny here today, Ramirez. a resounding 10 to 2 Red Sox lead in the ninth inning. Boston's now hit four home runs to this afternoon. Damon, Offerman, Ramirez, and Dawback. Speaking of Ramirez, here he is. And he corks one to left. A majestic drive. Home run. Into the wind. Wow. Ramirez. A three hit game. Two of them out of the park. 12 to 2, Boston. Well, a tough situation for Miguel Asensio as Al Nipper, the Royals pitching coach, goes out to visit with him. Primarily a two pitch guy, and right now the Red Sox are looking for the fastball and getting it. And Manny Ramirez just jumps all over that one. Asensio trying to get it in on his hands. Ramirez just launches this one to the bleachers. Would have gone well over halfway up into those bleachers without the wind blowing in from left field. Just never gave it a second look. That's pretty impressive. Nobody warming up in the Royals bullpen. The first baseman Brian. Again, you got to think ahead to game right. two and save that bullpen for game two. Hopefully, you got a better chance of winning that one. Senzio will be asked to get out of this inning. He needs two more outs to get that done. Now five home runs for Boston. And here is Dawback, who has one of them, and he has four hits overall. 12 to 2 Red Sox. They scored three in the seventh, one in the eighth, and four here in the ninth. 2 and 0. Oh. Manny Ramirez now with six home runs on the year, 17 batted in. They have some pretty good thunder in this lineup. What a hack there by Dawback, but he fouled it to the screen. Two balls and a strike. You take a look at the Royals schedule early on this year and you start picking the top offensive teams in the league. The Royals have seen a good number of them with the Minnesota Twins, the White Sox, the Cleveland Indians, and these Boston Red Sox. Want to find out how good your pitching is going to be? Line up against some of those teams. Way inside. Three balls and a strike. Red Sox leading the AL East. Yankees are leading in their game at last word, so Boston would maintain a game and a half advantage. And a fly ball off the bat of Dawback, and Tucker able to run this one down for the second out of the inning. Dawback bidding for his fifth Third hit of the day. Hillenbrand. And now two outs in the Boston ninth. Brand who got the big base hit here the bases loaded three run triple on Friday night hitless and four at bats this afternoon. I don't know. 
Royals will be down by at least 10 when they come to bat in the bottom of the ninth. Boston now with 16 hits, good for the 12 runs. Red Sox would be 7 and 0 on the road with this one in the victory column. Another game to be played here today. They are taking some hacks, aren't they? Two and one. Yeah, they got some murderous rips going. Even Brian Daubach, who hit the fly ball to right field, got it down on the end of the bat a little bit, but he had one thing in mind. Same thing Shea Hillenbrand was thinking about. This fastball really good from Asensio. 90 miles an hour at the knees, and that's one of the things he'll need to work on. Don't change speeds a whole lot. You got to work down on the strike zone, something he's had a problem doing here this afternoon. Red Sox after a day off tomorrow go to Baltimore for three games next before they go home. And hoisted into the air shallow center field. Carlos Fablis is there. And he's got it. The inning is over but the Red Sox get four more runs in the ninth inning. A couple of home runs Damon and Ramirez 12 2 Sox the Royals television network. Last three innings to take a commanding 12 to 2 lead onto the bottom of the ninth inning. Boston with a commanding 12 2 lead. They left only three runners on. Here's Ibanez leading off for the Royals. Get a bunch of home runs. You're not going to leave many on, are you? Yeah. Jack, five of them. Out of the ballpark here at Kauffman Stadium. Ibanez, one hit. Royals have seven hits overall. Trailing by 10 in the ninth. And one and one. Raul Ibanez got the start today in left field. Game one of this doubleheader. And he brings it, misses, and lost the bat in the process. One and two. Take a look at Raul Abanez. I mean, he thinks he is all over this pitch. Pretty good bat speed through the zone. It looks like a hanging knuckleball. About belled high. He's a good contact hitter, just completely broken down by that last pitch. A little tap the second baseman by Erga and out at first. Joe Randa do up next but Joe still in the dugout and a pinch hitter will come out. Joe Randa got a home run earlier in the ball game in the four that is our next tell direct connect hit in today's game Joe's first home run of the season. One out of three in the ball game he will give way to a pinch hitter. Here in the Dave ninth. Dave McCarty, number six. Been hitting for Joe Randa. We hope Joe will be available in that second game, playing with that tender hamstring. They take him out here in the ninth in favor of the pinch hitter, Dave McCarty. And he hits a little looper to the third baseman very quickly, two outs. Dylan Brand with the catch. Now the Royals are down to their final Navy out here Perez. against the Red Sox who are looking for their fifth straight win. Nafi Perez 0 for 3 and a five game hitting streak on the line. You got to hit in the ninth Friday to keep the streak going. Strike one. Nafi Perez the batter. Now one and one to the Kansas City shortstop. He's had a pretty good day defensively. Kind of gets lost when you're losing 12 to 2, but he has made a couple of brilliant plays at short. He started a double play as fine a double play as you're ever going to see from deep in the hole. Ground ball by Doug Marabelli, their catcher. Looked like it was ticketed for left field, but the Royals turned it into a twin killing. Started by Napier Perez. Now the 2 1. And hoisted into the air to shallow left. Ramirez looking up into the now partly sunny sky and he makes the catch and the inning is over. Royals lose it 12 to 2. We'll be back on the Royals television network. 